Hello guys, welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today I thought I should just do a video on common issues on Range Rovers uh, of this sort because they are recently becoming a lot more affordable and we do deal a lot of Range Rovers. <laughs> we do deal with a lot of Range Rovers um, nowadays. So um, if you are in the market for one of these or consider buying a Range Rover Sport in the near future, I think you're watching the right video because we are dealing with a lot of Range Rover Sports at the moment. and. Uh, we've experienced with a lot of faults that come with these cars. So when you buy this sort of cars, before you test drive it or check the bodywork, make sure you start the engine and put the car in the highest suspension setting and have a look at the underneath uh, of the engine bay um, because the first thing you wanna look for is oil leak. Um, these cars suffer from, this range of sports actually, suffer from uh, a lot of, hey buddy, a lot of uh, oil leak problems and fixing an oil leak problem on this sort of cars is not an easy job sometimes it requires having to um, take the engine of the car and to do that uh, depends on the mechanic to be honest some mechanics take it from the top off or and some of them lift literally lift the whole body of the car of the chassis and uh, access the engine which could cost you a lot of money so now you've checked that there is no oil leak or any signs of oil leak underneath the car which is a good point second thing you want to come to the engine bay and um, you want to move the engine uh, engine cover uh, and have these two parts on the left and right visible for you because these are the uh, rocket covers on the manifold and uh, they are notorious to break. So the way to check for these uh, sort of problems, you wanna take someone with you when you go test drive these cars and uh, have someone to rev the engine for you. And if you are hearing any whistling noise coming from these two part, from the right side or the left side, then there is um, a crack that's letting air out and sometimes oil, and that will restrict the power of the car and put it into limp mode. So we mentioned the manifold problem, the oil leak. The next thing that you want to 100% make sure that works fine before buying a Range Rover Sport is uh, the suspension. They do suffer from suspension problems. The uh, majority of the time is due to the compressor fail or the airbags will start leaking. And uh, if you see a Range Rover sitting awkwardly to one side, then that's an uh, airbag problem. But from experience, uh, dealing with a lot of Range Rovers, we usually change the compressors and that will sort out the problem. However, the compressor alone is about six to seven hundred pounds if you order it from main dealer. Uh, you can also find it on eBay, but avoid buying these sort of parts from eBay because yes, they are cheap and when it's cheap, they're not going to last longer. And also we've noticed the eBay ones over time, they start making um, some annoying noise. It gets a lot louder than usual. It works but it's very loud and uh, if you are carrying passengers, they're gonna notice it. So the way to check for a working suspension on a Range Rover Sport, uh, you wanna get inside the car, start the engine, and uh, you have uh, these uh, suspension operator buttons here. Um, you wanna make sure that the car goes up and down without problem. And when it's all the way down, you wanna make sure that it stays down without itself lifting it back up when it does that that means there's a problem that's why the car will not stay in its lowest position when it's up it usually stays up itself but if there's a problem with the compressor it wouldn't go all the way properly or it will lift the car very slowly and again that's another sign of uh, suspension problem on these cars Range Rovers do suffer from um, parking brakes or hand brakes because they're electronic and um, all other cars these days are going towards electronic parking brakes um, but we seem to have more problems with the Range Rovers than the rest of the cars and the way to check for it is obviously um, come inside the car and put your foot on the brake and operate the parking uh, parking brake here by pulling up and pushing it down however if you see a amber parking uh, sign on the dash or when you operate in the parking brake and you hear some uh, awkward noise that you shouldn't be hearing then that's the sign 
that the parking brakes are faulty. Fixing parking brakes is somewhere between 250 to 300 pounds and it's usually fixed by just changing the brake shoes. Another issue with these Range Rovers is a uh, steering problem. Um, the problem comes uh, usually when the power steering unit is on its way out or there's a problem with the steering links on the steering rack. Um, the way to notice this problem is obviously heavy steering. So if you feel some stiffness on the test drive, then that should ring some bells. Uh, even though the part may be inexpensive, the labor is gonna cost you a lot of money. So the last issue I wanna mention is the um, anti-roll bar bushes. For me, I think this is the most annoying issue that come with these cars. Um, and the reason for that is because a lot of mechanics don't wanna be doing these sort of jobs. I had to get out of the Range Rover because we had a customer for it. Um, so what was I saying? The uh, anti-roll bar links. You wanna make sure that um, you don't buy a Range Rover with this sort of problem. As I mentioned, it's a very expensive part to, to change and mechanics hate this sort of job. The way to check for this sort of problem, um, you basically drive the Range Rover for about 10, 15 minutes and uh, you open the window. If you hear any sort of squeaking or knocking noise coming from underneath of the car, then that is the sign you need to change the anti-roll bar links. So before I end the video, I wanna give you guys a bonus tip. Um, if you are buying a Range Rover that has done around 80 to 100,000 miles and it's more than seven years old, make sure that the garage has done uh, the cam belt or the cam belt's been done somewhere in its history. So thank you for watching. If this video has helped you in any sort of way, uh, please make sure you leave a like, subscribe and share the video whenever you can. And I'll see you guys in the next one.